Hello again from Everfree Northwest. I'm Joe Stevens. And I'm Tech Rats. And this is the Equestrian Car with Everfree Radio. And here we have a wonderful guest. There's that word again. Ah, it's such. It, I have to use <laughs> it for here because we have Mr. Daniel Ingram. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, right, thank you for having me. And so everyone obviously knows what you do with the show. You are fundamentally awesome uh, as part of the show. But go ahead and let us know uh, what you would work, do on the show uh, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, I write the songs on the show, and that's my primary responsibility. And so you write the lyrics as well, or you don't write the lyrics, you write the musical composition for the, sh the show songs, correct? Uh, it's Yeah. Generally, I just do the musical composition, and I get the lyrics from the writers. Uh, at least that has it, that's the way it's been traditionally. It's sort of evolving in season two. I co-wrote some songs, and um, moving forward, I'm taking a little more of an active role in the lyrics as well. And so I guess let's begin with that. That's a great way to start. Let's start with the process of you get a script, mm -hmm. and then you're told, make a song out of it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds fun. Pretty much. Yeah, uh, the scripts generally, you know, they're written by several writers, and so um, every, each of those writers has a style of, of lyrics and they consist of several pages. So the first thing I'll do is I'll look at that and I'll say, okay, well guys, how long do we want this song to be? Judging by these three pages of lyrics, are we looking about two and a half or three minutes? Um, <clears throat> so we have a discussion about the length of the song and I usually, I have, you know, traditionally haven't had any communication with the actual writers themselves. So at the point that I see a script, it's been locked and I'm now working with the directors and Hasbro. And they will say, um, okay, yeah, we want the song just to you know, be a happy song or be a serious song or whatever it might be. And I just take it from there and do my thing. Okay. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <how's> <laughs> it, yeah. Well, 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 that's interesting because um, we were talking about this a little bit before the interview as well, how you mentioned that you, you just get the lyrics. Mm -hmm. But when the writers are writing the lyrics down, sometimes they already have uh, an idea in their head. Um, and, for example, when we were at BronyCon, we were speaking to Amy Keating Rogers about the Smile Song, and she had a very different vision about where the Smile Song was going to go. She was expecting sort of like a, a Partridge Family, Brady Bunch style <laughs> variety. Um, and, then, and then when you got the final script, you turned it into, to, to something uh, totally different. Um, does that and, and she said good different. Like it was oh, good. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was a wonderful different. And um, is that seem to be the, the, the way it goes that, you know, like uh, the writers could have one idea, but then you, you think about it and you have a different idea and you take it in an entirely different direction? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually can be a challenge for me because I feel like I have an idea of how, where I want to take something. And usually for this show, I want the songs to have a lasting appeal. And I sometimes feel like, well, if we make it too hokey, it'll be fun for one or two listens, but I want it to really last for a lot longer than that. And so in the case of that song, um, I knew about the Partridge reference. I also was told about uh, the opening of um, Sesame Street was another reference for that. And um, I just sort of said, okay, I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna see what happens here. And I, I wrote the song the way it is now. And there was definitely some head scratching at the time. Everyone was like, huh, wow, we really, like this but it wasn't what we were expecting and um, I pushed and pushed and we made it faster and uh, eventually everyone just said okay let's go with this and I think I think the result was everyone's happy with now but yeah um, Amy and I have uh, you know we didn't really talk much about it at the time but I know that she had slightly different intention but I mean her lyrics were great and they spoke to me in a slightly different way and I was really appreciative of that well, I think we're happy because we got to see hear two versions of an amazing song so we got Absolutely. to hear your song and then we got to hear the original one when we mm -hmm. finally were able to hear that so mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of collaboration in general I mean mm -hmm. I I always try to work I mean I love working with great singers I love working with um, orchestrators musicians live players every time I record a track I will uh, once a song is sort of written and conceived, then I'll start working with any artist I can to kind of take that song to the, the highest level. And I think, you know, with, with Amy getting her lyrics or um, Megan McCarthy or any of the other uh, script writers, for me, that's just another level of collaboration that I re really embrace. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to write my lyrics a lot of the times these days, and I kind of actually love it, prefer it when I get lyrics from someone else because it really mm -hmm. lets us have a chance to, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, have more broad ideas, I think. Yeah, and, and, and you mentioned as well that um, uh, in certain cases you have contributed to writing the lyrics for the songs as well. And, and what kind of a different um, challenge is that to have to you know, write, the, write the words as a, in addition to writing the song behind it? It's a different challenge. Um, if there's already some pretty solid lyrics there and the issue is, okay, we just need an extra verse or these lyrics don't quite scan, 
then um, it looks like we've got <laughs> we have quick. another gentleman here. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. You've got to sit. Yeah, we've got to. Well, actually, gotta, you know what? This might work oh, yeah, better because yeah. then you can you can have the mic for Daniel. Okay, great. I can have the mic for Stefan, and everybody's going to be happy. Just joining us, so, we have our uh, the yeah. the last key into the grouping of all the musicians. And yes. you want to come on here? You can if you want. You can, you sir. Here, I apologize. You can sit right here. We we right here here. we're hijacking the <laughs> autograph <laughs> room, <laughs> and uh, you, you we have various. Big Big Mac is going to be come here right behind us, sir. Right here behind us. He's, he's going to be, be doing our background lyrics for Peter, us. Peter New, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> I refuse to take part in this unless Daniel wears the party hat. Daniel has oh, to Please wear do, it. sir. Please do. I want to wear it. Wait, Unicorn. Like there. There go. That's perfect. That is beautiful. Yes. We, have, we, have, so, we expect sir, you're in the middle of talking about right something Com important before all these interlopers showed up. <laughs> I totally forgot what we were talking about. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about we just go to another question sure. then? Because I don't think. Well, well let's let's we. Yeah. I guess we, we 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 can obviously come back to what Daniel's. We love what yeah. you're doing. This, but Stefan, introduce yourself real quick. What and you work with Daniel, correct? That's correct. I work with this guy. <laughs> Is, is it good that you guys are separated right now? Because he yeah, sounds there's some, there's some animosity here. I'm kind of worried. Fights, but no. <laughs> yeah, I think he's gonna beat me to a pulp after this. Yeah, I, I wish I had. And we're gonna film that live, ladies and gentlemen, pounds. right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll no, yeah. no, no, we're not. <laughs> You'll be the referee. <laughs> <laughs> is is Daniel winning, Peter? <laughs> I set you up. Come on. I Give know. me something. I did. Okay. That was gold. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? We were I completely talking about forget collaboration, this I think. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Peter okay. New, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for Don't break thank you so much thank for you. photobombing our interview. <laughs> <laughs> Any other VIPs who wants to come and photobomb us, we're more yeah. than happy to have them. And Absolutely. Be able to get but we will require we will require you to sing if you come over our camera. That's a requirement. That, there we go. There we go. Um, or dance. Singing or, or dancing. Either one. Mm. We're putting on weird horns. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you were talking about collaboration, obviously, with, with Stefan and everyone. Yeah. When you just have words on a page, do you then begin to go with the animators and the storyboarders to make the song come alive more? You know, it's very compartmentalized. Like, the writers will create the script, lock the script, and they're off, the, they're done. And then um, the animate, then I'll take the song, I'll write the song, which is the next stage, record the singers, and then that's done. That goes off to animation, and I often will never see what it looks like until the final mix. So when you're writing the winter wrap-up, Smile, and, all, and all, even uh, Giggle at the Ghosty, you're completely looking at words on a page, no visuals to guide your songs. Mm -hmm. Nothing is, we haven't even recorded the actor, the voice actors at that point. I mean, it's very early in the process. It's the next stage after script, so there are no visuals. The visuals usually come a few months later. Uh, do you have any input in the process between... <laughs> we got a when, horn on you. I, I think we need horns, too. <laughs> we got horn envy, I believe. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's, the in, it. it's the invisible <laughs> fez. He's wearing an invisible fez right there. Um, do you have any input in the process between when the song is written and when the song is finalized? Like, you know, like maybe you might have you might get a take from the voice actors and say, okay, well maybe I meant it a little bit this way or or something. Can, do, do you have that kind of input in between? Well, I I um I coach all the voice voice actors through the songs. Oh, okay. So I, okay. I am res like one so of the you're I, in the studio while they're singing. Oh, I, yeah, I definitely. Okay. Okay. I mean, that was one of the reasons why Tara hasn't been singing as Twilight. I mean, she's a phenomenal singer, mm -hmm. but being in LA and me being in Vancouver and the number of songs we have to do, I just can't be there. And I really, for me, it's the number one important thing. Yeah. I want to be there working with the actors directly and coaching them through the songs mm -hmm. and having being able to workshop them as well. And I think that's what makes the uh, their performances ultimately, you know, they're phenomenal singers, plus all that one-on-one -on -one time, it really, really helps. Well, mm. That's fun, and I, I think let, let's stick with that. I think that that's fun hearing the, the the songs and what's it like when we have the the actors and actresses in there? And uh, is it is it a challenge getting obviously the CMCs that they're singing? Uh, do you have a lot of fun with those? I have tons of fun. I mean, they the thing that's interesting is like if we do a song with all six girls, say, or it's, or the CMCs, all mm -hmm. three. You know, they don't sing them together at one time. We sing, we kind of record one for a few hours, then the next for a few hours, mm -hmm. the next for a few hours. So the first person is laughing because they get to do their own solo. By the last singer, they're like, oh God, now they have to sing to everybody else. And then so, we try to make it sound like... So, so each time somebody records their part, it gets added to the mix for the next the person. Added to the mix for the next person, yeah. Mm. So we, because um, it's kind of just the way it works out, it's sort of hard to get them all in the room on six mics and doing it at once. So that, mm -hmm. Although I, sh I guess I shouldn't say that because it... It spoils the effect, but yeah, all the songs are, are multi multi tracked. Wow. Okay. So, Stefan, are you in the room when this is all going on too? Once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
they try they have a bouncer at the door at the studio to <laughs> keep, just to keep me out but, over, but you can take him right he overpowers them that's the thing he's, yeah. he's taken out three of our best bouncers now, so <laughs> it's the Vulcan neck pinch right you just kind of Sibzy has oh. proven to be the most reliable bouncer so far actually really yeah Sabrina she's been pretty effective at keeping you out but well I'll have to run into her a few Peter times Peter our next guy <laughs> <laughs> so he keeps on no, jumping no, no, he's, in he's on he's things. a friend on the inside <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, stuff. Some stuff comes to particularly on um, <coughs> songs. Not not as much on Pony. Some I'm trying to think of what was the, some of the like bigger or so orchestral songs. Stuff comes in and, and um, sits in on the session because it's really exciting to be there, especially if we have a choir or if we have oh, yeah. uh, all the singers there. I mean, it's just just like an amazing experience. So. Well, that was awesome taking the whole <laughs> Money Creebers choir mm -hmm. to Brian Adams' the warehouse studio, mm -hmm. getting them all up there, all the mics down, yeah. singing the tracks, right? Yeah. And, and, and if you can talk about it, what, what songs were you, were you working with them on? Oh, the choir? Yeah. That was at the gala. That's gala, yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> all the orchestra in that Stefan program. Yeah, yeah, worked. and I worked on the orchestra for that one. And they were singing to that, right? They were singing to live orchestra. I mean, not live. They were singing to, or to a fully produced track at that point, yeah. Right, so they're playing off of the orchestra mm -hmm. underneath the in their headphones as <clears throat> they're singing. Mm -hmm. And in season, I'm not supposed to talk much about season three, but I can say the orc, we just keep getting bigger and bigger choirs. I can tell you that Big, much. big, oh, so the, so it's got some epic numbers. Yeah, can, some can epic we numbers that coming going up that we can... Epic. You heard it, it here epic. first, yeah. babies. Yeah. Yes. Well, we have the one babies? song from that's not very three, complimentary. Song. Yeah, two songs from season babies. three. Babies. Yeah. We have two songs. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Crystal Pony song also is... Are you walking here? Because I think you're walking I guess that's a fun one. I think people want to hear about the Spike song. We're talking over each other. Yeah, we are. We wanted to have Spike sing so for a long time. Kathy and I are go way back, and I know she's a great singer. And so it was really great, actually, when I got the script for that one. And they had Spike in the lyrics, and she was super excited, and we had a ton of fun. Even though it's just a few words, it was a good start. We've got to try to get a bigger Spike song in the future is what we're hoping to do. Yeah. Well, we talked to her just yesterday about it as well, and, and she, she loved the opportunity to sing. Although she said it was very challenging to, to, to keep herself in the Spike voice while she was singing the part, so I thought that was very And she had a cold at the time, too. Oh, did I she? Remember, she, she called me, and she's like, I don't think I can make it. And I'm like, uh oh. Well, let's just try it, and if it doesn't go well, we'll come back another day. Spike's mm -hmm. just getting more intense. Yeah. when he's, yeah. Cause he's yeah. So you can hear he's, he's a little more intense <laughs> on that stuff. Yeah. Growly. Yes. Growly, manly it's more Spike. More adult Spike. It's the, it's the, it's the future giant dragon. Well, we were speaking a little bit earlier about the evolution of the songs. You know, I think you, you made an interesting point, the lasting power of the songs. People to this day will love Giggle Out the Ghosties, and it's the first mm. song that is, I guess is in the, in the group of the ponies in episode one. And now we've got At the Gala, Winter Wrap Up, Smile Song, all those amazing songs, and even from this day, Aria, what has been the evolution of the songs working through the seasons? Um, well, they definitely keep getting more ambitious, you know, with something like... Um, uh, the laughter song it was quite simple in terms of it was a fairly short song um, those were Lauren's original lyrics and you know the production on that song is just sort of guitar mandolin it's pretty small and then uh, into season two we were like let's make these songs bigger and you know flim flam song is like four minutes and smile song is three and a half minutes or something like that and so I guess the evolution was to just go bigger, go more epic, and, and try to keep up that tradition. And we're going to get you more epic, right? Yeah. I'm always trying to get more and more epic. I like <laughs> it, epic. It almost <laughs> seems like the show is slowly turning into a musical, and that's something that fans have been clamoring for for a long time. How do you feel about the thought of doing like a musical episode of the show? I, I think that would be an amazing thing to do. I think we, all the talent is there. There's nothing uh, stopping us from doing a musical episode. So it's just... Yeah. Uh, I guess we just have to stay tuned. I, I honestly thought that the, and we talked about this earlier about the Broadway style that was mm -hmm. the winter at wrap up. I almost thought that that was going to be a, and it, it and almost was because at the end you do the reprieve of the lyricless one. So it was a very Broadway style. Is that kind of intentional? Do you go for the the musical style, or is it sort of something you do on your own? I love Broadway. I'm getting into it lately. I've been seeing more and more Broadway musicals. I saw Avenue Q when it came to Vancouver and uh, and Wicked and, and a few others. And I just, as I get really like more into that style, I love that this show has the opportunity to do Broadway because you can't. I can't do that on any other cartoons. But something special about My Little Pony, they uh, really let us throw the blow the roof off and mm -hmm. do whatever we like. It's yeah. Great. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. Like, what other cartoon today allows that? 
depth of songs and breadth of styles and that epicness, man. Nothing. I and you would anything. never think of it. Mm -hmm. You're coming into it initially, you would never imagine that kind of depth for that show. You really think, wouldn't. I don't even no. think Hasbro knew. <laughs> they <laughs> they like, had something entirely different in it, mind yeah, when they started this. It was yeah, like, it's like just we just want a song and then we just boom. Yeah. yeah. You know. And they, yeah, they wanted them like kind of small and simple, and then next thing you know, they're like, "Hey, we can push it. We can push it. We can push yeah. it." And now the sky's the limit. We don't have a whole lot of time left, but I do want to make one point. You tweeted about the This Day Aria, the uh, deceptive cadence. Real quick, can you just? <laughs> that was brilliant. That was like a Hans Zimmer kind of thing. Going Did you on. expect anybody to to figure that out? You know, um, I, it just sort of occurred to me. I was going on, and I just sort of chuckled. I hadn't even thought of it as being particularly like clever at the mm -hmm. time and just thought it was sort of funny and I was really shocked when people really got it. It looks yeah. like Stefan doesn't know what you're doing. He doesn't know what, doesn't know what You're blowing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> These people look up to you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, th I really planned that for a long time. There you go. That's it. Right it there. Easter egg totally meant to just, into this just cut the last okay. 30 seconds cut before that, that okay? So we're, we're getting kicked out. Yet. They're going to let some people in. That you're going to be signing some signatures, so we're looking forward to seeing that. So is there anything you want to say to the fans real quick before we go? And uh, Stefan, you as well, then. <laughs> well, we hope you're enjoying the con. We're having an amazing time. Having, we're having a great yesterday. We, we partied all night with the uh, Pony Stock yeah. and yeah. the uh, dance party. And well, real we quick, what did you think down. of Pony Stock anyway? Oh, it was amazing. It was so good. Uh, I caught Mic to Microphone set. I caught um, Silva Hound set and uh, a few others. And I mean, they were just yeah. not blowing e the roof off the place. Except he left Silva's set just before I got on stage. Was <laughs> manhandled on stage and danced around like an idiot. By the way, look that up. Yes. <laughs> it is on YouTube now. YouTube. Yes, it is. Architect dancing to Silverhound with a party hat. <laughs> nice. So, okay, well, thank you so much, guys. And I don't think Stefan had a chance to say anything to the fans. Did you want to say anything really quick before we go? I love you. Oh, oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Short and simple. I love it. So once again, I'm Joe Stevens. And I'm Tech Rats. With the Equestrian Choir Everfree Radio. And we're at Everfree Northwest. Keep watching. See you soon.